independent artists and producers like myself run into quite a few challenges when it comes to producing our own music or for others. And because of that, we have to make compromises. One of those being drums. Some of those roadblocks and challenges for us are either financial, the physical space we record in and not having enough, not knowing musicians or not having a budget. Fortunately for myself, I know how to play drums well enough to record for my own songs and projects that I work on. But still, not having an interface that can take a lot of inputs, not having enough microphones, and the previously mentioned challenges and roadblocks are always at play and typically stifle, for me, my creativity. And I shouldn't let it, but it does more often times than not, and it's really frustrating. And I was recently talking to my dad, and um, he's a musician and singer-songwriter as well, phenomenal. And I was encouraging him to start his creative journey and starting somewhere simple when it comes to creative, when it comes to creating content online. And, and I made the point to him that I was really preaching to the choir because the things I was encouraging him with are the same things that I struggle with. And so, so when it comes to recording drums, I often put it to the side and put whole projects off never completing or even starting them because I feel like if I can't record drums it's not gonna feel right or sound right. But I'm here today because I believe I found a phenomenal way to record and capture authentic, live, real drums that feel and sound incredible and phenomenal and that is quite on par for an actual studio space with an actual live acoustic drum set. So this is for all the Logic users, and maybe other softwares and DAWs have this capability too. So let's jump in and let me show you what I've discovered. This is how lately I've been getting live drums in my songs. From the comfort of my own home, without disturbing anybody either. So I'm going to play a little snippet of this song I'm working on, uh, and I'll show you how I did it. So this is a live take of the drums, of me playing the drums. And uh, here we go. So throughout the whole song, you can see from beginning to end, there's uh, MIDI information for the drum set, but that is live playing from my MPC here. My Akai MPK, rather. And so I'm going to show you how I did it. This is in Logic for all you GarageBand users. I don't know if this is a feature in there, so someone please let me know in the comments. But if it is, this will help you just as well. As much as well. Language. It's weird. Anyways, so. I built my own drum set using uh, the handy-dandy drum machine designer. You can see on the left side here. Um, in the track information, the inspector window, when you're opening up the individual uh, channel strip. That's what I'm using here. Here's a drop down of every individual instrument. And so this is typically, it's routed for and set up for when you first open it for an electronic drum set. But you can use it with the Logic GarageBand acoustic drum library that they have, drum set library as well. And uh, it's just a few steps, but once you get it going and you have your own drum kit built, um, it comes in handy so, so mightily. I'm going to show you how I do it. So this is the one I use for this song. This is the one I built out. So you're looking at the window here. You see I've got a speakeasy kick drum, Brooklyn closed hi-hat. You can see everything there. And so when you look down here at my MPC um, drum pads, you'll see on the screen which ones light up, and you'll see how I've routed it here. Whatever, you get it. I know how to play the drums in real life too, I promise. So, 
it's pretty um, straightforward. I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, disregard this empty kit here because my previous attempt at recording this video, I wasn't recording the computer internal audio, but now I am. So what you're going to want to do, go to your uh, empty channel strip of a software instrument, open that bad boy up. You'll see it down here. It's uh, instrument 14 now. So you're going to come over to the inspector window here on the left side. Click on that I and you go to instruments. And so you have this plethora of choices here, some things I've used recently. So, But if it's available in uh, GarageBand, it should be in the same place. All the Logic users right here, Drum Machine Designer. Most of you know where this is. And so, like I said earlier, how it's set up is for electronic drum kits. You'll see in the inspector window and um, the you know, library here. It automatically gives you an empty kit with some pre-routed instruments that you can load into here. So once you click this one where it says kick, you'll hear an electronic drum kick, electronic drum kit kick. Try saying that five times fast. So let's see what it sounds like. Absolutely nothing because I haven't selected one yet. Let's just, all right. So if we were making a club banger, club disco song, you know, use that type of sound, but I don't want that. I want an acoustic drum set. So on your inspector window slash library view here on the left, you're going to click where it says electronic drum kit and you're going to go right above it to the regular acoustic drum kits. So if you've used this before, you'll, you know, I have my favorites. I mean, I like all how all of them sound really. So just for the example of this video, We'll start with a Brooklyn kick drum. And now it is voila. Now I have a Brooklyn kick drum. Now I just have to route it, the input, to my uh, MPK over here, my Akai. So I hit learn notes. And over here, you'll see I'm going to choose one of these beat pads. I'm going to choose this one for my kick. And it should be there immediately. Which it is. Which is lovely. Here on the screen where it says empty kit, it doesn't matter where you place them. It only matters how you route them to your drum pad. So I'm going to find an empty one that already has a, is labeled snare. Right above the kick, it's labeled snare. So I'm going to go ahead and press that. There isn't, isn't one routed yet, but you'll see it always takes you right back to electronic drum kit. So you just want to press that title. Go back to the browsing menu here and hit the acoustic drum kits. And um, you choose what snare you want. If you want to go with a Brooklyn one, you can. If you want to go with a Neil Soul snare, you can. Motown Revisited, Manchester, Liverpool. You get the idea. Let's choose Liverpool just for kicks and giggles. And so it's routed uh, to the snare I want, but I have to pair it with the drum pad I want. So again, you hit input, hit learn note, and I want my snare right next to my kick. And there you have it for that. And so you do that. So with the empty kit here on the screen, you could pick another empty block for, you know, closed hi-hat. It's pretty simple. When you're loading in toms, that's where it gets a little, there's an, an extra step you got to do, extra step or two to get the toms you want because in this empty electronic drum kit, there is nothing routed for toms. So, you know, if I wanted to route my tom right here where it says rim, uh, it's going to give me a, a rim sound of some sort. And even if I go back to drum kit, you know, I want this to be a tom from Liverpool. But again, here in the empty block, it says rim. So if I hit Liverpool, you hear a rim shot from a Liverpool. Um, what's this called? Drum set. So what you got to do, and I'll come back to the hi-hat. I realized I just had an ADHD moment and didn't finish that. I'll come back to it. So I want a tom here where it says Liverpool. It's a Liverpool rim, but I want a Liverpool, what's it call it, tom. So right here, I'll actually close that and do it fresh. So you're going to want to open up a new software MIDI instrument, an empty channel strip. You hit create. And then on the left side library here, just go to your acoustic drum set. Go to the drum you want. So I want Liverpool. And we're not playing anything, we're not you know, changing anything, or we're just going here for informational purposes. So once you have the Liverpool drum kit pulled up, 
you're going to go to the top here, you're going to go to Editor, and you can see here on the vertical piano keys, it shows you what drum kit instrument is routed to what key. So high tom is C2 and, and uh, D2. Mid toms are B1, low tom is over here on G1. And so right now, let's say I want, I want a high tom on my drum kit that I'm building. So I'm gonna go, so now that I've acquired the correct information that the high tom is routed to C2, I'm gonna go back to my empty kit here, open it up, and the Liverpool rim here that I do have routed, I believe, oh, let's route it and then we'll change it to uh, the tom. So this drum pad is where I want the tom, but it's still on Liverpool rim, or, cra so, or crash, whatever it says now. Anyways. We're gonna to go to output. Since now we know that it's routed to C2, the high tom, we're gonna to select C2. And now I should have my high tom. The exact one I wanted, which is perfect. So for as many toms as you want on your live kit that you're gonna build out to play, this is the order of operations you're gonna to have to do to get each tom that you'd like. So let's do it again here pick a random empty block. I'm gonna come over to our library, library, come to our acoustic drum kit, Liverpool, keep the toms in the family. Go back to output. Uh, I believe we said G1 or F1. So now we gotta route it to my MPC. Learn note. Look at that, now I've got my low tom. High tom and low tom. And like I promised, I'm coming back to my hi-hat. This one is already routed to a closed hi-hat, so if I go back here, go back to my acoustic drums, 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 drums. Let's just pick a random one. Hi-hats from uh, Roots. That one sounds cool. Retro rock, not bad. Uh, okay, now we're in different territory. What happened? I think I accidentally changed my tom. We'll fix that in a second. So we've got a Roots hi-hat, and I wanna route it to the correct beat pad. So learn note on the input, and I'm gonna put it here. Yeah, the tom changed there. That was an accident. But all I gotta do is select Liverpool. back to the low tom. Let's go back to our screen and select, I believe it was G1 or F1. Yep. And so on and so forth. Um, you may have to, you don't necessarily have to do the same with a ride or crash. Some of those empty ones are routed, so it makes it a little easier. So if I want a ride, I'm gonna just do the same process I've been doing. Pick a drum set. Let's say Detroit Garage. And uh, yeah, so on and so forth. And so what I did for the drum kit for this song specifically, I'll open this one up. What I did for the crash cymbals I routed two different crashes to the same beat pad. So you'll look on the beat pad here. Why I routed two crashes to this one, and how you do that is you layer it. So on the first empty block up here, where it's routed, I have it there. And on the second page, I have the other crash routed to the same block. And you can probably see already by the label why I did this in this way. In most of the drum kits, a crash is either a crash left or a crash right. There's no like one crash sample, sample that's like a stereo one already. Or, you know, if you don't want a stereo, whatever. You can just have one left crash, one right crash. But I wanted the crash for this song to fill up both left and right. A left and right crash, if you will. So I have a left crash routed there and a right crash routed here. And when I hit my crash, you get a nice full crash sound in stereo. And so 
it's pretty simple. That's how you do it. Hope it works well for you. And what's cool is doing it this way because it's all built into a drum machine designer. On the main page here, where you're looking at all your stuffy stuff, you get individual channel strips for each and every instrument. So you take the time to label them, find where which one is where. You'll see when I go for my kick, right there, my snares underneath it. I went ahead and labeled each one. And so one thing you got to do when you're doing this, you know, you ha you have it routed to your drum pads, which is great. So since my kick is here. Um, initially, it's not going to be labeled where your kick is here within the individual channel strip, so you just got to press it until you find it. I noticed it was the first one, so you just got to be careful, kind of. When you click it and you're naming it, cool. Um, the only thing, I don't know why it does this. Someone, maybe someone else probably knows. It's not that big a deal, it's pretty irrelevant. Um, but just to be mindful of it, because when you actually click the individual channel strips, it won't play the sample at the pitch. Uh, I'll just show you. So my kick is here. You'll notice it, it, it's going to sound different. It's actually not even a kick anymore. I don't know why it does this when you... It just, I don't know. Just when you're selecting them to relabel them, don't freak out once you've labeled it and you go to play it and it's a completely different instrument. Just make sure you know, you're selected at your master kind of... Uh, channel strip here for the drums because everything's routed and plays correctly when it's selected there. For some reason when it's not selected here within the drum thing, it, it don't play right. So just when you're done labeling things and you find them all, make sure you're, you're pressed onto your, your, you've selected the master kind of channel strip here for all the drums. It's kind of a drum bus if you will, if you want to treat it that way. So you can see as I'm playing those, I have it, the, the drum bus, the master drum bus here selected. And as you play your instruments on the selected or the routed drum pads, you'll see where they light up. I've got crash or open hi-hat down there. My two crashes there. A tom there, a tom there. Ride is up there, so yeah. It's cool because you can go in and you know load up with plugins and or keep it simple, treat it like a real drum set, uh, however you want to do it. And so I hope this video was helpful. This is a song of mine, a love song that I've written. I've wrote. I've written a love. Oh, I can't speak. A love song that I have written for the lovely state of North Carolina. I wrote it while I was there. I was deeply inspired just by the vast beauty, as many are. Um, I'll play a little bit of the chorus just for fun. Here's a snippet. North Carolina. So that's me playing those drums on my beat pad here, the drum pad. It's home where I long to go. So there you have it. Way before I officially sign off, I forgot I wanted to show y'all how to save the drum kit. So when you open up a new Logic session, you can recall the drum kit and use it again for your next session, new song, new whatever. So you don't that way you don't have to build a whole new uh, drum set again. And this only works if you use the same MIDI controller every time you go to use the drums that you've built. Okay, let me show you. So the part I forgot to mention is how to save the drum set. Once you have made it, you're happy with it, uh, how it sounds, the pieces you've picked, what you're going to want to do is open up the library. And on the bottom right here, it says save. You've got to be saved. Comment below if you know what that reference was. Okay, so you hit save on the bottom right. It's going to open up this window. You've labeled it the drum. You know, you've labeled it, hopefully. I've labeled mine Brooklyn Dot Speaks because it's a combination of the Brooklyn and Speakeasy kit. Anyways, uh, so you can see in my instrument folder, I already have some saved. All you gotta do is hit save, and then it has saved. Let us see if it truly, 
truly has saved. So I'm going to go to my logic file here. I'm going to open a new one just uh, to see if this works. Lord, I hope this works. All right, software instrument. Close all this stuff. Um, I Actually, I don't even think you have to go to instrument. I think you just open the library once you've got your software instrument channel strip open. You On the very top, you go to user patches. You'll see all of the ones that I have made so far. Brooklyn Speaks is the one I have made. Let's pray to the good Lord that this has worked. Let's open this up. See if all our, hey look, all our samples are there. Let's play some. Perfect. So there you have it. It indeed worked. It is saved by the good Lord's grace. So there you have it. Back to the original outro. That was transition audio. Okay, here we go. That's how you build an acoustic drum set uh, in Logic, hopefully in GarageBand 2, using the Drum Machine Designer. So that way you can have flexibility with levels of the drum kit, mixing it, doing all the fancy schmancy stuff one would do when you have a real live drum kit, but far more streamlined, far more simpler. And honestly, you get a really great res result and you can really make it sound like a, a live drum set in a live room with you know routing and, and room IRs that are built into Logic. If you've got your own, all that fun stuff. When it comes to creating, it's a gift, truly. And as creatives, we have to steward that gift well. And not get caught up in the numbers, the streams, the likes, the follows. Truly creating because we were built and created to create. For our own enjoyment, to be able to enjoy with others, truly that's what makes it a gift. So I hope this video helped. I hope you're rocking recording your own drums now. Leave a like, comment, let me know what you think. If this helped you, share it with someone. Make sure you're subscribed, I'm gonna be making a lot more content just about the gear I use and how to utilize the tools that you already have. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Peace.